All right, welcome to part four of this mini series about planning for e-commerce. And now we're going to talk about uh, actually some strategies you can apply to increase your business. Well, one of the first things you have to think about in terms of strategy is who should develop the website or the e-commerce component? Should it be an internal team or should we outsource? Well, some companies outsource the entire online business site development. OK, and a lot of times there's no problem that but most companies realize that this is too risky because you would be completely dependent upon the information or upon the data that someone else gives you also you would have to provide a lot of confidential data to an outside provider that might be sensitive to your business the third thing that is dangerous here especially in terms of online online payment is that you are giving access to a non uh, to an outside business um, to know about for example your data to know about how the payments are done and so on so the key here to success in my opinion is not 100% one or 100% 100% internal or 100% external I think the key to success here is a balance between outside and outside sourcing outside sourcing and knowing what are the things that should be outside outsourced so let's talk about the internal team the internal team they can create um, we need to create an internal team even if we outsource the entirely of the project uh, and we need an internal team in-house that basically will be responsible to um, analyze all this all this communication or to create all the work in case they do hundred percent of the work so we need people that are creative thinkers and people that have a good sense of company goals and culture technical skills i would say is less important than other factors because you can always outside and out uh, you can always outsource this component but uh, critical thinkers and people that know the company well you cannot outsource this because you need them to be in-house in order to generate the value or the message that you want so even if you want the, the, the internal team is doing 100% of work, you should always uh, measure their progress uh, and make sure that they are staying in line with the goals that we want to achieve for the development of this online, uh, of this online component. And uh, partners can also be important, especially here on the early stage, to provide technical advice and to provide best practices, for example. But that does not mean you should have them always during the entire process. But I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So about this partnering up, there's three major types of outsourcing we can do in my opinion, in terms of projects like this. Early outsourcing, uh, late outsourcing, and partial outsourcing. Early outsourcing is initial site design and development. And we outsource this so that we can launch the website as quickly as possible. And then the outsource team would train the internal team to do all the maintenance and all the work that needs to be done in terms of handling the site operations. So the company's um, own information system people would work closely with the outsourced team and they would work on a daily basis, not most normally, um, to really make sure the, the website or the component is launched as quickly as possible and that the internal team can afterwards take the full operation of the, of the component created. Late outsourcing, on the other hand, is the internal team initially develops the design, they create, develop, they implement, and they operate the system until the system is stable and working. And then uh, once the, this competitive advantage has been created, then the system is outsourced and we outsource the management of that component to an external company. And then that internal team basically will turn their attention to a new project that will create a new competitive advantage and, and go through this process once again. Now, obviously, um, this has many advantages, but I strongly recommend this, recommend this for online businesses because online businesses, I think, makes much more sense to use early outsourcing for this or the partial outsourcing in order to develop components of the work but depending on the business once again this can be a great way uh, to develop more competitive advantage for your uh, overall business Okay, in terms of partial outsourcing, we also call it component outsourcing. And that means that basically we identify specific parts of the business that can easily be outsourced to someone else or to another company. Um, I believe that it should only be outsourced in case that that component uh, does not directly affect the value of delivery to your customer and does not put into jeopardy um, confidential information of your uh, business to the outside world. Um, so small businesses tend to, to outsource more than large corporations, obviously. And one of the things they outsource, for example, is email handling or response functions, uh, electronic payment systems, web hosting, and so on. 
Um, the next couple of concepts I want to talk about is the concept of incubators. So incubators are basically, I'm sure you heard about it. Um, there's many famous incubators all over the world. One of the biggest ones in the world is located here in Paris. It's called Station F. You can research about it. It's very interesting. Uh, but they offer startup companies a physical location. They offer offices, normally co-working or, or co-sharing offices, uh, accounting, legal assistance, computer, internet connections. And normally they offer it at very low prices um, in order to bring all these small businesses into one location. Uh, they may also offer for the best ideas seed money or investment money, management advice and even marketing assistance. And uh, most typically they ask for a, um, a part of ownership of the business. Not all incubators do that, but the ones that charge less prices typically ask for this. And we're talking here about ownership can be something between 10 to 50%, depending on how much the incubator actually helps you to launch the business. So incubator is about creating and starting the business. The next one um, that we're gonna talk in a little bit is about accelerators but before I go into that there's many businesses that internally have started their own incubators okay some companies created internal incubators and basically they develop technology for use in the main business operation and the people that can propose ideas are employees of the company 3m for example does this very well and uh, many and many companies have a policy that if you bring in a topic uh, a point and, and develop it uh, you can maintain a part of the profits that that new product can offer one of the companies that does this also very well well is Google, where actually they give every week an amount of hours to the employees to work on their own projects. Now, the thing that we need to realize is that most of these uh, internal incubators fail because of management, because of a lack of culture. Uh, there's many reasons, but it's important to know most of them do fail. Accelerators, like I was saying, this is work, they work with entrepreneurs who already started the business and therefore they have the proof of concept. In other words, they already made the first sale. But then Accelerators is a more formal application with a more competitive series of proposals, presentations, and what they're going to help you is to really accelerate the business, to put gas into your business. Um, the accepted proposals typically will receive a monetary investment in exchange for a small equity interest. And typically here you have a bad better negotiating power because uh, you already proved that your business can be successful because you already made sales. So to finalize, what are the different type of skills that we need in terms of staffing, staffing for e-commerce? Now there's many different types of um, many different types of, of skills necessary for larger projects. For example, chief information officers, this is people that typically manage all the information systems in a large corporation. You might need to develop as well a business manager, someone that brings the technical expertise and puts them in line with the, the actual objectives of the business to be achieved. Project managers, for obvious reasons, to manage the project of development. Um, project uh, portfolio managers, this is normally if a company has many different, uh, many different um, many different uh, uh, projects going on and you need someone to coordinate all these projects to make sure that they are not colliding or competing against each other or creating cannibalism inside the company. You might need account manager, for example, as well, to make sure to manage the, the necessary uh, accounting and the necessary financing of the project. You're going to need functional managers, people specialize in, in different departments that you're going to need. For example, someone specialized in terms of, of uh, human resource management, of finance, of marketing, and so on. Uh, web programmers, for obvious reasons, okay. Web graphics, so people that can do web uh, graphics for the individuals for your uh, online component, extremely important. You're also going to need content creators, for example, content managers, social networking administrations, what we call social media managers, for example, uh, online marketing managers, customer service representatives, call center managers, system administrations. So depending, this is just some of the skills you might need. Now, I'm not saying you need all of them, all right, but in a way, you're going to need a little bit of knowledge about each one of these parts to make sure that the project develops successfully when developing online components to your business. Oh, and I forgot network operating managers as well. Those are the people and uh, that operate um, the, the networks itself in others in terms of exchange of information and database administrations in case that you have um, to manage large amounts of data.
All right, so to summarize, we cover a lot of different things that can be considered when developing sites. I know that I did not give you a plan step by step because there's many websites that can do that for you. I just wanted to give you um, an assortment of tips or things that you need to be careful about and you need to consider when developing these plans. Thank you very much for watching and let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions.